Good morning, church. Good morning. Let's stand together. I invite you to worship. If you're watching online, let's worship together. Come on, clap those hands this morning. The Bible says the Lord is His Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You're free this morning to worship. Here we go. Step out. Step out of shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the wild. You don't be afraid. start with that song because the spirit of the lord is here and the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty or freedom anybody thankful for freedom this morning and one of the declarations of that freedom is called baptism and as you know this morning we have baptisms this morning come on come on 
Oh, that's not good enough. Come on, we got baptisms this morning, church. Come on. Hallelujah. So while we worship, they're getting ready now. While we worship, there are going to be a lot of people who are raised to life this morning through baptism as an outward uh, profession of their faith. And it's going to be an exciting time. So as they come, we're also going to worship. Anybody ready for some more worship this morning? Come on. So they're going to take off baptizing, and we're just going to keep going and going and going. Come on. Isn't God a good God? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on.
your people come awake in this city oh god of revival pour it out pour it out every stronghold will crumble i hear the chains hit the ground oh god of revival pour it out pour it out come awake in your people Baptism is one of the most important things to the faith. Jesus got baptized. Okay. So for all of these people who had their life changed, and let me tell you, there are some others in here that today is your day. There's going to be more moments for that. Today is your day. But for those who have just confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, on the count of three, I want you to give them all a collective praise like heaven praises. Are you ready, church? Here we go. One, two, three. Lift up your voice. Give him glory. Give him praise. We lift up our voices. We lift up our praise. He's worthy of every moment. He's worthy of every word. He's worthy of every song. Yeah. Sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. 
cannot help but feel the presence of God in this room. Come on, let's lift our hands to heaven, church, as a sign of worship, as a sign of surrender. Maybe you've never done that before this morning. I encourage you, lifting our hands as a sign of surrender to the Lord. You're telling the Lord, I am yours, completely yours, fully yours. And this morning, Lord, we know this is a house of miracles because you are the miracle worker. And Lord, you're in this room. You're among us right now. We know that. Because the Bible says you inhabit the praises of your people in this morning, Lord. We have praised you this morning. We have proclaimed that you are Lord in our lives. So, Spirit, we want to know you, God. We want to know you. Show us your glory. Show us your goodness. For David said your goodness and your mercy follows us all the days of our life. And for the Bible says you have brand new mercies. They're new for us every single morning. And this morning, Lord, we are exceedingly glad, exceedingly grateful for you. We praise you with all of our heart. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. A house of miracles. wonder how many in here are believing God to do something great in your life. Come on. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this moment of worship and this moment where we've so clearly felt your presence near to us. For that, Lord, we say thank you. We approach you with a grateful heart. We don't take this moment for granted where we get to feel you, we get to know you, we get to experience you and encounter you in a deeper way. And this morning, Lord, we're longing for you. We want to know you better, Lord. We're asking, can you help us on this journey as we strive to become more and more like you? Thank you, Lord, that you're strong enough to work miracles in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you're still moving. And, Lord, we're still believing in faith. God, you can do anything. And this morning, we have faith and confidence in you. It is in Jesus' name. And everyone, say amen. Aren't you so grateful, glad to be at church this morning? Come on, come on. Aren't you so glad to be here? Woo! church that starts off like that we may never leave aren't you so glad to be here you can be seated you can be seated you can turn to the person next to you and say it's so good to see you at church this morning so good to see you at church you didn't know you were coming to a celebration this is awesome this is amazing and we just got started while we're in this moment of worship, though, I want to also extend our worship. And one of the ways that we do that is by giving God's tithe and offering. I know we normally do giving at the end of the service, but today we're going to do it right here because giving is an act in a form of worship. So for those of you who give here, I am exceedingly grateful for all that you do and your generosity here at Family Christian Center Church. On the screen, there are going to be several, several ways to give. We'll give you a great chance to look at that. And you can pick which way. Look, at, isn't it so easy giving? I remember in the old days, there was only one way to give. It was by check, and you had to make sure you balance your checkbook. Anybody remember those days? 
I don't even remember those days, <laughs> okay? But there are so many different ways to do it electronically if you want to. If you still write checks, if you still put cash in, okay, you can get an envelope and the ushers are going to pass the buckets in just a second. You can drop that in there. You see on the screen, you can give it FCCLive.com. We have giving kiosk in the lobby if you want to swipe your debit card, credit card, whatever. If you want to give that way, that would be awesome. But how many been blessed by giving in your life? You've seen God work in open doors when you give. We know that because God says he loves a cheerful giver. So today we give cheerfully knowing that without the Lord, we would not have anything that we have. And when we honor him, he honors us. And we honor him for his word says, bring all the tithe, which is 10% of your income into the storehouse so that there is meat in the house. Okay, so today we have an opportunity to honor the Lord. And the highest form of worship is obedience. The best way that we can honor the Lord is by obeying his commands for the bible says if you love him keep his commandments and we're doing that this morning so however you give i challenge you however you give thank you so much for your giving i'm telling you god's doing something great in this community he's doing something great in schools and i believe god's going to do something amazing in our lives amen church let's pray together and then we'll give together father thank you for every blessing every good and perfect gift comes from above we know that every gift you've given us has been good and so this morning lord we give back to you for the lord you said if we honor you you will honor us you said you would give back to us some 30 some 60 some 100 fold and so this morning lord we're standing on your word we're standing on the principles of seed time and harvest and we sow a good seed today on good ground it is in jesus name and everyone say amen god bless you as you give cheerfully in jesus name cheerfully and generously Consider missions, of course, giving, which would not be the tithe. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Missions would be offering. That's anything on top of the tithe. Can please consider that. Keep considering that as this church touches the nations. Well, we have so many things going on, as you saw. We just had baptism. That is incredible. There is still time for you. So some of you want to get baptized today. You make a decision for Christ. You make a decision for the Lord. There is going to be time to do that today. So make sure that you stay plugged into this service because we got a whole new series starting today. Uh, it's going to be incredible. I believe God's going to do something awesome. But I just want to plug a few things for you real quick. Easter is in March, okay? It's March 31st. Easter is coming. I think that's three weeks from today, okay? So thank you for those of you who did go out and sign up on serve teams. Thank you so much for doing that. For those of you who didn't, I challenge you this morning. We need your help, especially on Easter, but then thereafter, we're going to need your help. And you don't have to serve every week, maybe once, uh, every two weeks, once a month, something like that. You serve at your own capacity, but we would love to explore the gifts God has given you in a deeper way. Come on, as we grow, we understand God has given us gifts and we use those gifts for our community how many want to change your community want to touch your community want to see God do something great well it starts in houses like this so make sure that you go sign up for those serve teams we will be so so grateful just as you're leaving today it's on the right it's a sign that says serve teams right before you hit the glass door anybody excited for the word this morning I'm so ready after that I'm telling you I am so ready to get into this so join me and let's get ready for the message Good morning, church family. My name is Brittany, and I'm so happy that you're here. Today is a special day because today we will be having baptism service. Being baptized is your public declaration that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you or someone you love would like to be baptized today, register in the lobby or online at fcclive.com slash registration. ¿Tú hablas español? Bienvenidos al Ministerio Hispano. You are invited to join us for Ministerio Hispano. Everyone is welcome to join our Spanish ministry to grow in faith. We look forward to welcoming you with open arms. Join us every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. All right, today we're beginning a brand new series called Miraculous. Get your Bible and your notebook ready for an incredible message, and let's jump in.
Well, good morning, everybody. Isn't it good to be in God's house? Come on, right? I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, everybody. Those of you joining us online, welcome. Was that amazing to see so many people get baptized for Jesus today? Come on, everybody. That is exciting. Last week, 53-plus people made a decision to serve Jesus with their lives last week. Come on, everybody. Isn't that exciting? Well, I'm going to teach this morning, and I'm really excited about it. And at the end of that, we're going to have a time of prayer, and it's going to be awesome. One of the reasons we moved the offering to right now is because at the end of the service, I envision just a time of beautiful prayer and people being touched by the power of God. And we're going to do that throughout this month, and it's going to be amazing. And normally, I would preach, and then I would pray and do a call to people that to make sure they're right with God and invite people. And I feel a stirring to do things a little differently this morning. So the first thing I'm going to do is pray and give people an invitation to make sure you're right with Jesus Christ. I feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit that there's people, after what you just saw this morning, you're ready to say yes to Jesus. That the Lord's already touched your heart. And so... In a different manner, I want to pray with you. So can we pray right now, everybody? Father, thank you that you're with us here tonight. It's abundantly clear that your presence is in this place. We sense your Holy Spirit so beautifully and so powerfully. And I pray today, God, that you would just draw your spirit, would just draw people right now. I pray, God, that you would just touch people's lives like only you can. Thank you for the beautiful lives we saw that responded by being water baptized, letting everybody see that I'm a follower of Jesus. And I pray right now that you, Holy Spirit, would touch hearts and minds and lives that need a touch from heaven right now, that need to follow you and pursue you. So, Holy Spirit, draw people right now. Touch people and meet all their needs right where they're at. I'm asking for heaven's touch right now in the name of Jesus. Could I just ask you to just stay in that posture of prayer? And would you ask God to just touch anybody under the sound of my voice that needs a touch? Would you pray that God would just lead anybody to Christ that needs to be led? And I'm just going to just talk to people for a minute. Maybe you're sitting in this audience or you're watching online and you'd say, Pastor Rick, I've... I believe Jesus is God's son and he died on a cross and he rose again. I believe that, but I've never asked Jesus Christ into my life. And today for the very first time, I want to surrender my heart and my life. I may not understand it all, but I believe this is real, what I'm experiencing today, whether you're in this building or watching and you'd say, Pastor Rick, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you please pray for me? It would be a joy and a privilege to pray for you. There's another group of people possibly in this building or watching online that you'd say, Pastor, I just, I know I'm at a place where I need to rededicate my life to God. I, I've asked Christ in my life at some point, but I have made this some decisions I shouldn't have made and I'm going in a direction I shouldn't be going in. And today I just want to hit the spiritual reset button. I want to rededicate my life to serving God. Would you please pray for me, Pastor? I just feel compelled to rededicate my life to God. I believe there's people today, you're sitting in this audience that that's the heart, your heart's cry. So some of you are saying, where do, where do we begin this spiritual journey? You, first, you have to believe Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross and he rose again. And the Bible says he's alive right now in a place called heaven. If you believe that, you can take a next step. And I believe there's many people you'd say, I have that faith, that assurance. I believe that in my heart. Well, there's a next step where you surrender your life to God. Today, there's people that you'd say, I've never asked Christ into my heart. And today, for the first time, I'm ready to say yes. There's another group of people that say, I have prayed, but I'm not where I need to be. And I know I need to make a course correction spiritually. I want to hit the spiritual reset button or rededicate my life to God. 
We're not looking around. We're not trying to make a spectacle of you. Please pray, everybody, right now. But I want to see who I'm praying for. I believe there's people in this balcony, on the floor, watching online that you'd say, Pastor, you're talking to me. If that's you, I want you to boldly put your hand up high right now because I want to see who I'm praying for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this, everybody. The Holy Spirit's moving. Yes, ma'am. Listen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Just walking around the building right now. I'm telling you, watch what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit's tugging on people's hearts. Anybody else over here? God bless you. Just walking around the room here. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you right now. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. A lot of people today. God bless you, sir. I see you waving your hand. God bless you. 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 Watch what the Holy Spirit's doing, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, I see your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, come on. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else say, please include me in that prayer? There's more people. I already know that in my heart. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm trying to tell you this. The greatest thing you can do is to get right with Jesus. I see your hand. Yeah, more hands going up. Anyone else you want to be included in that prayer before we pray? Yeah, more hands going up. More hands going up. More hands going up. Come on, anybody else saying, I, please pray for me? Yeah, so many people. Yeah, God bless you guys. If you're online, let us know in the comments. Would you pray this with me? Especially those who raised your hands. But matter of fact, can we pray this all together out loud? Would you say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life and help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, everybody. That's something to celebrate here today, what God just did. Come on, everybody. That's exciting. Glory be to God. We are so excited for you all. You just made the best decision you could ever make is to say yes to Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, God has beautiful things in store for you. We would love to be involved in your process of getting to know Jesus. One of the things you can do outside in our lobby, if we could put it on the screens too, we have a booklet that says, did you just give your life to Jesus? This is free. It's out on the Welcome Center or any of the tables. Grab a hold of that. And, you know, if you want that, or if you'd like an electronic version, you can scan that right now with your phone, and it'll give you some practical steps. What do I do now that I gave my life to Jesus? I encourage you to grab that. Keep coming back to church. Let us help you grow in your faith. I'm going to have to start another service here or something. We're growing so fast. God's moving here. One of the steps we encourage is to get water baptized. Now... We just had part one. If we need to have part two, we'll do it, okay? I'm just telling you. So you can, you can sign up. You can go to guest services and let us know or come over there on the side at the end. We're, we're going to baptize people that want to be baptized today. And there's some of you that were sitting in here and you're like, man, I wish I would have got baptized. You can. Okay, we're going to do that. You can do that afterwards. All Here's how we do this, okay? We just want people to know what they're doing. Okay, when I was a little guy, I got sprinkled. I hear I cried and didn't enjoy it. When I was five, I gave my life consciously to Jesus. And it stuck for me. So I can't determine a child's age of understanding. That's between them and God. But I know as a five-year-old, I got right with God. And so kids can get young. Be young. And when they're littler, we dedicate them to the Lord. We pray for them. We ask God to set them aside. But when they know what they're doing, that's when we water baptize them and submersion. That's how we do it at our church. Okay? And so uh, we would be honored praying for your little ones that would be dedicated to the Lord. Or when they're of age and they know what they're doing, we would love to water baptize them. But there's people in here. we got to change your clothes. We can set you up if you want to do that afterwards. So here's how this is going to go today. 
I'm going to teach. We're going to have a great time studying God's Word. This is a series called Miraculous. And we're believing for miracles. Today we're teaching on Jesus, our healer. And it's going to be beautiful. And the offering's already done. We did an altar call already. And at the end of this, we're just going to invite people to come that want prayer. We're going to pray for people. We're going to believe there's going to be miracles in people's lives today. Because he's a good God, right? And then if people want to get baptized, there'll be baptisms on one side, miracles of people getting prayed for, healing on the other side, people in the audience worshiping. It's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. So when I'm done, you can leave if you want to, but I'm going to stay out. You know, it's, at SeaWorld, they have the splash zone with Chamu. And maybe we have the splash zone, but I'm looking for a spiritual splash zone. But God's going to move today. Amen, everybody? So here we go. You ready? AJ, you're going to take me to heaven, but I'm good right now. So you don't have to pray no more. You are on the fly. Look at it. He came back. He played behind me. So I'm good. Thank you, man. (laughs) So how many believe Jesus is our healer? He's our healer. I want to give you some Bible scriptures. Mark 9.23 says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm going to believe that today. Anything's possible. Look at Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is good to those who hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Anybody hoping and seeking God today? The Lord is good to those people. Micah 7, 7, as for me, I look to the Lord for help. Come on, everybody. All right? I will wait confidently for God to save me, and my God will certainly hear me. Amen, everybody. I want to show you a scripture in John chapter 5 of a man who waited 38 years for a miracle. 38 minutes seems like a long time for me. I I pray that you haven't waited 38 years, but maybe you're sitting in here saying, I've waited 38 plus years. God can help you. And I want to show you this story in John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which in Hebrew it's called Bethsaida, which having five porches. And it says, and, the, and these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, and then whoever stepped in first, how many know that's a problem when you got a lot of people, after the stirring of the water was made well, would whatever disease he had. Verse 6 says, and then Jesus saw him lying there. Or excuse me, verse 5 says, excuse me, guys, put that back up there. Now a certain man was there, for, had an infirmity 38 years. That's a long time. And then Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in this condition a long time. Look what Jesus says to him. He said, do you want to be made well? How could Jesus ask that? Let's talk about that for a minute. Sometimes I believe that you can learn to live with your problem and stop believing for a miracle in that area. Anybody hear that? John 10.10 says the thief, which is Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and Jesus came that you'd have life and you'd have it more abundantly. But when the enemy has stolen from us, many times we come to a place of it becoming normal that we no longer pursue God by faith to help us in that area. It becomes a normality or something we're comfortable or accustomed to. And Jesus tells this man after 38 years, do you want help? Do you want it to stay the same or be different? Now, some of us would be like, of course he wants help. 
not everybody is wanting God to help them in every area of their life. And so he asked this man. Now, Exodus 15, 26 says, I'm the Lord who heals you. That's part of his name, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, right? We've heard of Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider, but he's also Jehovah Rapha, our healer, right? That's another one of his attributes or who he is. I'm going to give you four thoughts this morning, and two of them out of those four thoughts are questions. And the first question is, how big is your God to you? How big is your God to you? Is he big enough to heal you after 38 years of not being well? Is he big enough to still help you? Verse 7 says, the sick man answered and said, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water's stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps in before me. So, did you notice something? What did you notice? He, that's right. He gave an excuse and didn't answer the question. The qu- How many of you when Jesus asks you a question, you answer? I don't know, son of God, that kind of. And he said, do you want to get better? And he's like, I can't. Because when I try, it doesn't work out. And somebody goes before me and gets the miracle, so I don't get it. Can I tell you there's enough miracles in heaven for all of us so we don't have to fight over it? That's the beauty. He can heal you and you and you and you and you. And it's okay. This morning I was praying for somebody. It was beautiful. And I said to the guy, do you need anything? He's like, no. And then the, his party said, he needs prayer too. And I go, it's okay for you too. And that, God's okay with that. He's okay for all of us to get help. Psalms 33, 6 and 7 and 9 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, the starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea, come on, into jars. Come on, make big mason jars maybe. I don't know, right? He puts them in jars. For he spoke and it came to be. How many know that God is bigger, the second point, than all your problems? He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than a broken leg. He's bigger than anything else. Financial problems, marital problems, relational problems, a mind that you feel like you're losing it. He's bigger than your mind. Your heart's broken in pieces. He's bigger, he's bigger than everything today. He can do anything today. Amen, everybody? God's bigger than all of our problems. So my, my third my thought for you is, what is God telling you to do? That's my question. What is God telling you to do? For this man, Jesus looks at the guy, he gives him some excuses, and then basically to summarize what Jesus says, he says, get up. We notice that in verse 8 and 9, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Now, pause. 38 years of being sick, and this man named Jesus I never met just said, get up and walk. How many know there was probably a split second of thought? Maybe there was a thought, what if this doesn't work? What if this isn't happening? Come on, right? But ultimately, he has to make a choice and verse 9, it says, immediately the man was made well, took up his, bre- his bed, and he walked. He walked. Can I make this point to you that miracles come many times after obedience? Did everybody hear that? For the man, it was changing his mindset of 38 years and believing that God could actually care and love me and want to help me, I'm going to believe. I'm going to have to pick up my mat and I'm going to walk. I'm I'm going to go. And, And immediately, the man was made well and took up his bed and he walked. 
And a lot of times, miracles come when you're obedient to what the Lord tells you to do. John 10, 27 said, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Who's, who's the sheep? Can, can you make me feel like more people are involved than 10 of us? Or the, who, who are the sheep? We, we are, right? We're his, we're his kids. I mean, what parent doesn't, in a healthy relationship doesn't want to have communication with their child, right? And, and a sheep. And, you know, Becky and I, we, we, not to go on a tangent, but we, we have the cutest grandson. He's awesome. He's 10 months old, and he, he gets on FaceTime with Becky, and she'll go, hi, Grayson. And he'll smile, and I get so happy watching him smile at his Grandma Becky, and uh, what are we going to, what's he going to call you? Grandma, Grandma. okay. <laughs> and, but he's learning what she sounds like and what she looks like through repetition. And I'm telling you, if you will pray and try to listen to God's voice, you can learn what he sounds like and looks like through repetition. Yes. And now he smiles when he sees his grandma because he's getting to know her. And you and I can learn to smile in life when we, it can be a terrible day and God says, I got you, I'm working it out, it's going to be okay. And then you can be all happy because you know God is with you. Yes. You see, God loves acts of obedience. He told Noah, build an ark. And that's why you and me are sitting here today, because the earth was preserved with those who were left from the flood because of Noah's obedience. But remember, people laughed at him. Remember, remember there was a, guy, a general named Naaman, and he was against the armies of Israel, and he heard that God healed people. So he went to a prophet, and the prophet told him God was saying, you have leprosy. You can be healed of your leprosy if you'll dip in one of these bodies of water. And he told him a specific one seven times. At first, when he heard that, he didn't go, oh, praise the Lord, I can be healed of my leprosy. This is awesome. No, he got ticked off. Let me tell you why he got mad. Because he said, well, where I'm from, the water is a lot nicer than the stinky, dirty water here in Israel. And I'd rather go to my place and dunk seven times than to do it here. Well, how many know God doesn't really care what our opinion is sometimes? I said it really nice. Sometimes he just tells you this is what it is. Anybody a parent? Sometimes you can't. And grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, sometimes the child isn't in a place intellectually to understand what they're saying. They just have to go on faith that the person in charge has what's in their best interest trying to keep them from harm. Right? And some of you may have been in a toxic situation. You're going to have to get that out of your system because there's some healthy situations God wants to put you in because there's safety in a multitude of counselors, the Bible says. Okay? But for Naaman, he had to make a decision. And so the servants around him said, look, if he would ask you to do something awesome, would you have done it? And of course, the answer would have been, yeah, come on. If you're speaking to ego and I look good, I can go conquer all these people or climb this mountain and then you'll heal me. But that's not, God didn't want to stroke his ego. God wanted to challenge his ego and said, go dip in this body of water seven times. I want you to think about that. Imagine in that tank those people are and you go, one. How many know it's all in your eyes? Your hair's a mess. Come on, ladies, your makeup's gone. Unless you had waterproof. Come on, everybody, right? And your ears are full of water. Your nose, it's all up in your nose. And then God says, six more. Number two's not bad. Number three, you're starting to get a little irritated. Number four, you're like, I sure hope this works. Number five. Uh-huh, somebody's in trouble if this don't work. <laughs> Number six, 
I don't know if I want, I don't even know if I got it in me to do it. One more time. And then on the seventh and final act of obedience, God, he comes out of that water and the leprosy on his skin is completely gone and he's made whole with an act of obedience. Remember Peter? Jesus invited him to walk on the water. We're all focused on the fact he was sinking. If you start walking on water, then you can focus on him sinking. But until then, you probably ought to give him a putter's clap rather than getting all mad at Peter. I'm just saying, everybody. I mean, he walked on water because Jesus told him to come. Remember the blind man? Jesus spits on the ground. Pastor Rick, that has germs. Well, not Jesus, apparently, everybody. <laughs> Spits on the ground, rubs, rubs his finger in the mud, puts it on the guy's eyes, and then he tells him, go wash the mud off of you. So he's obedient, and he washes the mud off his eyes, and what's happened? The guy's no longer blind and he can see. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you, an act of obedience will many times bring a blessing in your life. So I don't know what God's speaking to you. We're not making it a formula. We're saying, what is God saying to you as an individual? What's your act of faith? I don't know. But I, I, I see it in so many patterns God moves when there's faith because we walk by and not by, but we want to walk by and not by, right? Do what God's telling you to do. And I believe the blessing of the Lord will come for you. In 2 in Corinthians 5, 17, it says, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, anybody in Christ? Yeah. Come on, we added a few of us too, didn't we? Amen. If anybody's in Christ, those of you who prayed this morning, you're in. The new creation has come, and the old has gone, and the new is here. Isn't that beautiful? Last scripture I want to read to you comes from James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. It says, is any sick among you? Or sick, let him call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And look at this. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up, and if they've sinned, they'll be forgiven. God loves the prayer of faith when it's prayed. And so today, I'm going to pray for you right now. And I'm going to encourage you, by faith, to place your hand on your body. Now, let's just be candid. You may have more than two places that need help. Just pick one place and we'll believe God to cover the whole body, okay? We're going to believe God to cover the whole body. And maybe you're sitting here and you're like, Pastor Rick, I'm believing for somebody else great. I'll, I'll have my faith towards you, but don't not believe for you because you're so concerned about somebody else. I think that's awesome you have compassion. Why don't we believe for that person and you? That, would that be okay? We can believe for all of us today. And the same Jesus who spoke to a man and said, do you want to get better? Is here today. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. I'll be with you always. So today, I want to pray for you and believe God for a miracle for you today. So put your hand by faith wherever you need to. And Father, today, I believe you're a God of miracles. I pray for my brothers and sisters in this building, watching online, maybe watching a video of this service later on. I pray 
that the God of miracles would move in this place. The Bible says if any two of you would agree on earth as touching anything, it will be done by our Father which is in heaven. You said that by your stripes we're made healed. We're healed. You're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. I pray for hearts that are broken to be restored. I pray for marriages that are broken to be healed. I pray for minds that are struggling, Father, to be made whole. I pray for broken relationships to be restored, families that are broken to be restored. You are the same God that healed Naaman of leprosy. You're the same God that allowed Peter to walk on the water. You're the same God that spoke to that man who had been sick for 38 years and he was healed. You're the same God that's that put mud on the man's eyes and he was coldly healed of his infirmity. Right now I set my heart in agreement and ask for the power of the resurrection. The same Jesus that raised, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would just touch you through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God heal your people right now in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name which is above every name in the name of Jesus that today something significant, something beautiful would begin on believing by faith and we choose to walk by faith and not by sight what we see right now in the name of Jesus. God touch your people in this house, those watching right now, touch your people like only you can in the mighty name of Jesus. As I'm sitting here I'm just seeing glimpses of God's presence touching people. I believe somebody, you've had arthritis in your fingers, God's healing people right now. There's just a beautiful touch. It's not kooky, it's not spooky, it's not weird. But I just, somebody's knee, God's just healing you, start moving that thing. There's just people, somebody's lower back. I just see, I just see, I can just see glimpses of God touching people right now with the power of God. Here's how we're going to end our time together. I'm done preaching. We finished. We've given a chance for people to respond to the gospel. It's been beautiful. And now, those of you who would like additional prayer, we're going to invite you to the altar, and we're going to pray for you. If you're good and you want to call it a day, no problem. No, you're not being disrespectful. We just ask that you'd keep the chatter outside if you wouldn't mind, please. So we can just keep this a holy presence. But... Those of you who want to stay, you stay. And if you're here and you want to be baptized, you can identify yourself at guest services. Come off to the side and let us know I want to be baptized because maybe we're going to baptize some people. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to pray for people and just minister to people. So, Father, bless each one, whether they stay or go. May your presence be with us. And thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to move. We're so grateful to God that you inhabit the praises of your people. It's in Jesus' name we pray today. Come on, everybody. Amen. Come on to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have made the best decision ever. You may be wondering, what's next? Well, we have you covered. Scan the code on the screen to learn about how you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. If you would like to connect with someone personally, you can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. Now is the time in the service where we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. If you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97000 or you can give securely online at FCCLive.com slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Lord, thank you so much for just providing the funds for us to be able to give towards your kingdom. I just ask that you bless it today and that you be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like prayer today, you can text FCC Prayer to 97000 and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. Thanks for joining us at church today. We hope you have the best week ever.